Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Nicole Hori. In our show this week, we'll cover a walk on the wild side, a street scene organized by the Kidney Foundation in Honolulu's Chinatown. The event included stands, booths, exhibits, and food, all the way down Powahi Street and up the other side on Hotel Street. The National Kidney Foundation of Hawaii is the state's leading health agency dedicated to the detection, prevention, and treatment of kidney and urinary tract diseases. If you didn't know, March is National Kidney Month. In celebration, the Kidney Foundation of Hawaii wanted to throw a party. The Walk on the Wild Side was that party, a fundraising event benefiting the Kidney Foundation and an invitation to enjoy the best of Chinatown. That included a historic walk, a scavenger hunt, local food and entertainment, free health care screenings, and a crafts fair with lots of Hawaii's most creative artists. The mission of the Kidney Foundation of Hawaii is to prevent kidney and urinary tract disease, improve the health and well-being of individuals and families affected by this disease, and increase the availability of transplant organs in Hawaii. In Hawaii, there are more than a thousand volunteers. They bring help and hope to the more than 2,000 Hawaii residents who suffer from kidney failure or who have kidney or urological diseases. First, we walked Malka on the Fort Street Mall to see what was going on, and we found, among other things, a large booth and exhibit presented by the Kidney Foundation of Hawaii. Everybody's concerned about health care. Nobody knows what happened before, and nobody knows what's going to happen with, with Mr. Trump. So how can you help? Well, basically, we can help apply them for MedQuest. If they're ineligible for MedQuest and they're lawfully present here, we can also direct them to be uh, enrolling on health, healthcare.gov. However, it is a closed enrollment period now on healthcare.gov, so they'll have to wait till November 1st if, they're, if they do not qualify for MedQuest or they don't already have employer-sponsored health coverage, or Medicare. What is MedQuest? MedQuest is um, Medicaid. I'm an acupuncturist, and I'm sharing with people the power of acupuncture um, you know, to treat uh, kidney and uh, nephrology disorders. What are you doing here? Um, spreading awareness for the Sjogren's and Lupus Foundation of Hawaii. I have Sjogren's syndrome, um, and they have um, Sjogren's syndrome and lupus, and we're sharing information on how to get educated and get healthy living with both autoimmune diseases. Of course, I want to give a big mahalo to our platinum sponsors like Kaiser Permanente Hawaii, the city and county of Honolulu, U.S. Renal Care, and our friends at HMSA. How about giving them all a round of applause? What's the wall of love? We're just putting um, notes and like special words onto this poster, and then you can go and hang it over there in the wall of love. I'm looking for love. More specifically, we're looking for the wall of love. The wall of love is just further up the street here. Are you giving away food? We are not. Yes. This is for the, the visitors, for the Kidney Foundation. This is actually for the volunteers right now, and so if we can get JJ, oh, there goes JJ right there. <laughs> JJ, there's a rumor that you're responsible for all this food. I, I, you know, for all the volunteers for the Kidney Foundation, of course I am. <laughs> Well, we're helping the Kidney Foundation of Hawaii, and uh, we're trying to create awareness. And I'm with Walk with the Doc. Ah, okay. So we're trying to get those folks who know they need to walk out walking every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. at Central Oahu Regional Park. It's free, it's fun, it's a social event. Dr. Wee does a uh, five-minute health tip, talks about whatever's on our heart and our mind for that week. And you wouldn't, can join you wouldn't us. happen to know where the wall of love is, would you? Gosh, I wonder where the wall of love is. Gee, could it be close by? I, I heard it was very nearby. If you haven't visited, let me know. I heard it was a spectacular will you place. Take that, us, will you take us there? Come on over, I'll show you. This is the wall of love. We've been looking for it all morning. The wall of love. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh, the wall of love. There it is. There it is. I wonder what it says. Let's, let's take a closer okay, look. Please. Uh, this is the wall of love. Then this is uh, by Hospice of Hawaii, and it's about it honors those that have donated their organs to help others. As you know, there's a long waiting list for organs. Yeah. So this is a wall. The uh, the families of the donors 
can put together a piece of a quilt and then put it together now. Okay. So you have this whole whole fabric coming together and this is what makes makes Hawaii special because we're all kind of tied, everybody knows each other, yeah. I'm your auntie, you know, yeah. so you have yeah. to really behave. And this kind of honors especially those families and those people who have given their organs Very so someone beautiful. else gets a chance. And the, reason, and the reason I'm here is my wife was a recipient and it gave us hope and another just a chance to enjoy each other for a short while more as it turns out but it was that hope that we received and that's why we appreciate it. We're all here because we get touched. Everybody has a story. I'm part of this group. This is the hospice group if you've ever lost anybody. I want to talk it's to them grief, too. Yeah. yeah. So we're, they do a great job and I visit them once a month and I you know, I, I can cry. So. Sure. You're wearing a National Kidney Foundation, but you're actually with hospice? That's right. I, I've got this on for the walk today, and I've got my St. Francis shirt on underneath. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about the hospice. Okay. Well, in hospice care, we offer support for people who have a terminal diagnosis with a life expectancy of six months or less. And we take very, very good care of them. Most of them are in their homes, and we go to visit them there. But we also have an inpatient facility where respite care is available. Talk to me with the nonprofit. This is my nonprofit, Walk with the Dock Oahu. Okay, talk to me. So this is a, um, we meet every Saturday at 8 a.m. And this is to just get the community healthy. I start with a health tip, and then we also do a warm-up. We walk for 50 minutes at your own pace, cool down, and we always have fruit refreshments. But I've been doing this for one year now at Central Oahu Regional Park. We have 350 people who have signed up. We get about 30 people every week. And I would love to advertise and have people from all over join me. I've had wonderful results, testimonials, people, it has changed their lives. This is just something to give people a little nudge. How can they find you? You have a website? We have a website, Walk with the Doc Oahu, so you can, you can contact us there. Otherwise, just show up at Central Oahu Regional Park every Saturday, rain or shine, and it starts at 8 a.m. promptly. And you're the doc. I'm the doc. You know, there's a lot of people around, you know, supporting you with you here today on a Saturday. Yeah. And I bet none of them has told you that you have a spider on your face. It's a butterfly. <laughs> oh, I see. It's supposed to be a butterfly. So this is how we get to transform lives. You come from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Come out and join us. Walk with the Doc Oahu. Woo -hoo -hoo. Then we proceeded ever into Chinatown on Powahi Street to see what was going on. We are hosting a make and take for the community so that people who are participating in the Walk on the Wild Side and visiting the various booths and hopefully participating in the scavenger hunt can stop by and as they leisurely hunt for their clues uh, can come and do a free make and take and today they are uh, doing a um, magnet, a refrigerator magnet. Chinatown is a great place to walk around and see all the hidden gems. And Pohaku Rocks, and what we're doing over here is we're doing a little experiment. Well, actually, it's a, it's a fun exercise. And what we're doing is we have these um, Hawaiian values. For example, Kuleana, Ha'a Ha'a, uh, Ho'oheno, and they have the English explanations of these values from the Hawaiian culture. So. And these values are very interesting because what, what is the things that you value? What are the things you value? Outdoors. Outdoors. Green okay. grass. Green clear grass. Skies. Clear sky. Nature. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have you pick. The value picks you. Okay. So you're going to pick from here. You know, obviously you're going to do it upside down. So pick one. Okay. I'm picking one. Okay. Can I tell you what one? it is? Yeah. It is ho'okaulike. Say that. Very nice. That yeah. means to bring everything into balance. What you're going to do is you're going to use this yeah. and you're going to write Ho'okaulike on the rock. On the rock. Very nice. You did it very well. You even put in the Okina. Very good. Of course. Okay. So now put this someplace where you always see it and remember that you always want to bring things into balance and that is your value. <laughs> this okay. is Marsha Joyner. She's going to take us for a tour. So these are all antiques and Roy has been in Chinatown for 25 years? 27 years. 
I'm a veteran yes. <laughs> of Chinatown many, many different many, ways. Many, many years, yes. Yes, yes. And Roy just has the most interesting things that you will ever find in, in Chinatown, but especially the Donald Trump, the, the Donald Trump toilet paper. Yeah. My name is Peter Murray. How are you doing? Peter, and tell us about all these beautiful things you have here. Well, I pretty much just make animals and um, pottery for fun. Um, and also for sale, yeah. This is my last, my la one of my latest creations. Peter Potts, 808. Oh, I'm Michael and Nicola Haley. I'm a painter and a sculptor and a uh, poet, sort of. And uh, yeah, no, basically most of my stuff has to do with uh, the inner turmoils or the inner motions of moving between uh, now and tomorrow and uh, where we stand as to who you are in this space. And yeah, so uh, most of these things are basically based on that, you know, it's kind of all of these commemorations of where people are from and where they came from and what they're doing, uh, all meet here. And these are some of my, the kind. I'm looking for the spirits of the old I, I am looking for solutions not uh, I'm looking for solutions that's not for tomorrow because I don't think the tomorrow solutions work. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for the solutions of yesterday. My name is Ron Tosh, uh, president of Honolulu Wood Turners. It's a group of guys that turn wood. Um, in Honolulu is probably 110 members. So I made the, the ball at first. This is out of mango. And um, the ball comes apart, and inside is just a uh, lattice turning. So this is all just one piece of wood I turned uh, out of a, a blank. My daughter, who's getting married next week, about three weeks ago called me and said, can you make two goblets for me? Which I make things out of wood, not typically for using for drink. So this is, she said, make it with a dragon claw. And so this is what I came up with. And that is, except for the glass, that's all wood. And then for her husband on the toast, she wanted something with the moon. And then she also specified you had to be able to see all the way through it. So that was the criteria. When I tell her, hey, I'm almost done with them, she says, by the way, can you make a ring box for me? Which, being a guy, I don't even know what a ring box is, but I assume it holds rings. So I made this here. This is a, um, well, for displaying the ring. Can I hold it up there for you? So you'd put the two rings in there. Now I'm hoping that the ring bearer boy is not too scared of dragons. No young person is scared of dragons, no. Not, so anyway, so that's it. So I'm all done. Next week I'll be at the wedding. Hopefully this all works for them. Uh, Dave from Manakai, Hawaii. These are photos that our photographers take. Um, they're natural landscapes, waves, turtles. Uh, this is a metal print. And uh, it's actually uh, one photo with our effects. Um, imposed on it. I'm one of the stampers for one of the clues, uh, station number six to be exact. My name is Stanford Yuen. I've been a long time resident of Chinatown and I grew up here. Yeah. Chinatown has turned the corner um, and this uh, through the efforts of many many organizations, the city organization like what you belong to, the Arts and Culture mm. District and we have many other Chinese uh, community organization that promotes Chinatown also. Stuart Feinberg. And tell us why you're down here in Chinatown with us today. To help make Death with Dignity a law that passes. We're signing up people to help us uh, move the Death with Dignity bill along hopefully next week in the House and we're going to need everybody on board for this one. It's going to be a heavy lift to get it through the House. Uh, call right your House representatives and if they're on the health committee, uh, call them. This is Sarah from HPR. Sarah, say hi. Hi. So why are you out here today? So we're out here to get the word across about listening to Hawaii Public Radio and to talk to people about our realignment that we just did mid-February. What kind of response you're getting? Mixed responses. Some people are really excited about it, and then some people have lots of feedback about the changes. Tell us about HPR. What is it? I mean, why, why should uh, Hawaii listen? Why should Hawaii support HPR? 
Well, it's the one station um, where you can get uh, really good local cultural programming in terms of radio stations, right? You have a variety, you, can, you have a choice of classical, you have a choice of jazz, you have a choice of world music, and then there's the news and talk. Um, it's national, it's international, it's local, it's objective, and um, it's telling you personal stories and giving you a chance to really think about things. I'm here to be supportive of the radio station and it's actually it's a great opportunity to to come out to the community and meet and greet a lot of the people that are here. I'm actually on the side picking out a show, you know, cuz <laughs> cuz she's kind of like chatting it up. But really we, it, it's you know to be supportive and you know there's nothing better than actually physically pounding the pavement and getting outside of our little you know, station box and meeting the people that actually listen to the station. Like, Were you a shy child? Uh, I was actually a little bit I actually it was, and it and it. Uh, that's why radio became one of the, like the perfect medium because you can just talk, 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 and not really see who you're actually talking to. Thank you, Nick. And let me, uh, Sarah. Let me close by asking you how much of what he said do you agree with? I think I agree with a hundred percent of it. <laughs> but I didn't know that you were shy as a child. I do find that a little surprising. <laughs> My name is Fong Tran, fourth generation. Uh, come from Vietnam. I stay in Hawaii already 36 years. And th this is a uh, gallery, 29 years. This is all my painting. I paint this is in Hawaii. The waterfall is Yosemite. That's Halamau Mau. And this is Kalapana. Yeah. You are Sandy Pole. Yeah. The famous Pole Gallery. Right oh, nearby. thank you so much. Very, very <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a part of uh, Hawaii culture, Hawaii art for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, this yeah. was. So, tell indeed. us about running uh, the, the Pole Gallery. Well, it's just a very fun thing. Um, I get to represent Hawaii's best artists, so I'm happy. Yeah, it's great. all good. Yeah. How did you get involved in it? Louis Pohl was your husband? He died in 1999, and I could have just sat on the artwork that he left me, but so I opened up an art gallery just to keep me busy. Yeah. But most of all, because it's so fun, I get to meet so many new people. I get to talk to you. That's so true. Can, what a treat, and I get to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a treat. Yeah. So that that's, oh, sorry. I gotta take this. Yeah. Okay, well, sorry. Why don't we talk to him? I have one question for you. Is it hot? It is hot. <laughs> all right. That's the, nobody's going to argue with that. Thank you for standing out here all no day. No problem. We headed back on Hotel Street to return to our studio on the Fort Street Mall, but not without a little lunch first at one of the great food trucks there. Uh, I'm an artist, and I like to m have fun with people. I did fencing in, in college, you know. What? Yeah, 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 See, yeah, yeah. It's more like this. <laughs> Tag! Uh. So we're here to talk about a project in the downtown Chinatown area. Um, we have a repaving coming up. Part of the repaving effort that the mayor has been doing over the past four years, the opportunity came up that the downtown Chinatown roads needed some fixing. With that, we looked at that and tried to leverage it by not just putting back what exists, but looking to make some pedestrian and bicycle improvement. We are trying to hear from the public, those that live, work, and play in these areas. What do they see and experience? It's been great feedback, and we're going to take all of that back and weigh that against some of the pros and cons that we've seen and some of the additional input that we've seen and taken through the traffic analysis. We are with the fantastic Justine Espiritu, Think Tech Hawaii star. Today, I'm here in the capacity of Bike Share Hawaii. Um, as you know, recently we announced we will be launching this summer. Uh, downtown Chinatown is going to be an area that we're going to have uh, plenty of bike share stations. We're going to be launching with uh, 100 stations and 1,000 bikes, which is really exciting. Most cities launch with about half that, 50 stations, 500 bikes. But it's really important to have a really dense network. We're the Hawaii Bicycling League. Um, so we're a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to getting more people cycling, making it safer to cycle. So we do that through education, uh, we do that through advocacy for more bike lanes, and we do it through events designed to get people out riding and having fun with each other. So we have this thing we're pushing called Minimum Grid. It's the idea that we need a minimum network of bike lanes that are going to allow people to get from point A to point B. This is the Planar Painters of Oahu. Mark Brown is our teacher, and so we tend to uh, paint every Saturday, once a week, and a lot of these are the artists that paint with us every week. Do they get the sound? 
and the others. I can't help but see that you guys are taking advantage of this chess game here. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Are you guys playing for money? Oh, no. I am the leader of fighting against the Hawaii home Colon Filipino terrorists. We're with the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation. The three or four most asked questions are, when's it going to run? How much is it going to cost me to ride? And is it safe? We're looking to open the first 10 miles by the end of 2020. Great. The full system, 20 miles end to end by the end of 2025. Great. We're still trying to figure out how much the fares will be. It's a very creative menu. Did you, did you figure this up or did someone else? Oh, it's a work in progress. Yeah, it's excellent. How long you been in business? About seven years. So when you get home at night after a long day's work, do you have the same food that's on the truck? Oh, no. <laughs> You want a bite of this? All in all, it was a lovely sojourn through a delightful event in which we enjoyed so many interesting booths and exhibits and saw so many friendly people. We hope we'll see lots more Chinatown events like this one. Open air public events like this improve the quality of life in our community. We like to think that this is an expression of the positive transformation we have hoped to see in the public spaces of our city. Have you noticed the changes in Chinatown? There's First Friday, of course, on the first Friday evening of every month and so many new restaurants, shops, and art galleries, and now Walk on the Wild Side. After all these years, it's finally emerging as a place we want to visit, a place of innovation, of entrepreneurship. Want to know more about the Kidney Foundation of Hawaii? Check it out at kidneyhi.org. Want to know more about what's going on in Chinatown these days? Check it out at chinatownnow.com. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia and communities around the islands and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. See our website for links. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen, First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
And yes, you can call in to our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Nicole, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it? Just like Nicole does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Nicole Hori. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.